We would reduce costs uh, for diagnostic tests, reduced, reduce costs for therapies, and um, improve outcomes for a number of these canines. And there's currently really no wellness check in terms of a blood test that's currently available out there. Welcome to the NEI 500 CEO interview program, where the senior management from select listed companies will share their insights with the audience about their company's growth potential. In this episode, we had the opportunity to speak to Scott Powell, the executive VP of investor relations of the company Volution Alex, listed on NYSE American with a trading symbol of VNRX. Volution Alex is an epigenetics company developing cost-effective blood tests to help diagnose various cancers and other diseases. A few highlights our readers really should know before watching the interview. The company has a broad intellectual property portfolio, including 64 granted patents to date worldwide. Its flagship platform, NuQ, is a unique technology looking for very early nucleosomic markers of cancer in the blood tests. It has large-scale colorectal cancer, lung cancer, and blood cancer studies are underway globally. Initial COVID-19 trials and sepsis study reported. Longitudinal study now underway. The Texas-based Volusion Veterinary subsidiary launched new vet cancer screening tests. The stock had a very good one in February when it went up to over $6.50. Since then, it has settled back to $3.25 range. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content. Hi, Scott. How are you doing today? I'm very well. How are you, Gilbert? Thank you for uh, doing well. I know it's uh, COVID times, but we are all here, uh, you know, just still working hard uh, from home mostly. The same for you? Exactly. Working hard, working from home, getting used to uh, video calls and conference calls. <laughs> yeah, you're sure you're one of those, uh, one of these uh, uh, interviews uh, many times. For some of the audience who have not known uh, a lot about Volution Alex, uh, maybe you can uh, give us a bit of an overview and background about the company. Sure. Thanks again for having me today. Volition RX Limited, we're a publicly traded company. Uh, ticker is VNRX on the New York Stock Exchange American Exchange. We are a diagnostics company, primarily working in blood uh, to screen for different diseases, primarily different cancer types, but we're also looking at some other respiratory ailments currently. But our work has been in blood, primarily in um, colorectal cancer, lung cancer, uh, bloodborne cancers, although we are looking at some other diseases currently. So uh, maybe you can also tell us also about your, your platform. I believe the name is called MuQ, uh, which is all of your science base. So can you tell us a bit about the science behind this uh, whole uh, background, your product and your platform? Sure. So Volition's proprietary technological platform is, um, is nucleosomics, and our products are often branded as NUQ, N, capital N, lowercase u, capital Q, which actually stands for nucleosome quantification. And we recently launched our first product at the end of last year. Uh, that product, as well as the other programs we have that are in clinical development, uh, are all based off of the same uh, nucleosomics platform technology. We look for um, two primary things. One, total amount of nucleosomes or the nucleosome quantification in a person's uh, bloodstream, and that's uh, chromatin debris, uh, typically derived from, uh, from cancerous tumors, or um, now that we're looking at some respiratory ailments, uh, potentially uh, from NETS injection into the bloodstream. So we look at total amount of nucleosome debris in a person's bloodstream. That's often indicative of uh, high levels of um, cell debris or cell detritus, which is, which is typically associated with cancer. And then we look as well for specific signatures, specific mutations or modifications um, to these chromosome fragments called nucleosomes. And um, we've noticed that some of these specific signatures are associated with certain cancer types. So we look for both 
uh, to make it simple, A, the, the presence of cancer, and B, for signatures that help us identify what particular form of cancer it's likely to be. So in some of the materials, you'd also talk about the, the strategy getting um, a new cure commercialized. Can you explain a bit more what was sort of the strategy you're doing in sort of getting this product uh, commercialized? Sure. So it, it depends a lot on the product and on the geography. So if we take our first product that we, uh, that we launched at the end of last year, that's our new Q uh, veterinary cancer screening test that we launched in collaboration with Texas A&M University. And so that's a United States product. It's a blood test to screen for two common cancer types in canines. That is a faster path to market because it's animal health. So that's regulated by the US Department of Agriculture, not the FDA. So we did not have to seek FDA approval for this a particular product or blood test. If we look at our human health products, which are in clinical development, we're running clinical studies to uh, ideally develop a blood test for lung cancer screening, for uh, a number of bloodborne cancers, typically uh, lymphomas and leukemias. Um, these human health products, if we're looking at the United States, would likely require an FDA approval or either through a PMA application or a 510K clearance. Um, outside the US and Europe, for instance, typically we would have to get a CE mark, um, which, which would register the product with the European Union. Uh, in Asia, it depends largely country by country. Um, certain Asian countries or governments will accept a CE mark, will accept FDA approval. So it really depends on the mix of geography, human health uh, versus animal health. But we are committed to getting uh, accurate, easy to use, um, cost-effective blood tests to market for a variety of oncology uh, usages to screen for different cancer types, as well as some respiratory ailments. So you're truly uh, going into different locations too, right? So you mentioned, so, so a product worldwide is not just limited to the, to the U.S. markets, right? That's correct. We, so we're, we're a global company. We have offices in, in Austin, Texas, in London, um, our, we have two manufacturing facilities and, and our office building just south of Brussels. We have an office in Singapore. Um, and so in our clinical studies are around the globe. We have clinical studies in Europe, United States, uh, Asia, and, and Taiwan. We have, as they say, a number of shots on goal, a number of opportunities in front of us for a variety of products. Each of these products um, address multi-billion dollar market opportunities for us. So. It, it's um, really on volition. It's on us to show clinically that the um, test is accurate, that it's, um, um, that it's predictive in terms of diagnosing various cancer types, and then it's on us to you know, seek this, the appropriate regulatory approvals country by country, and then either launch ourselves or find partners with whom to launch these products. So you recently, just, uh, you just mentioned that uh, recently launched a product for the vet market. And do you want to tell us more about uh, how's the, how's the progress so far in, in terms of this product launch? We launched the product um, at the end of November, 2020. It's for sale exclusively on Texas A&M's website. And uh, it's a large market for us. There are about 77 million canines in the United States alone about 20 million canines age seven or older. And the way to position our test is, um, one would be for symptomatic screening. So uh, your canine is sick and it's of a breed that's predisposed to either lymphoma or hemangiosarcoma. Um, your, your canine could be a candidate for our blood test to rule in or rule out uh, those two cancer types if you have a breed of, of dog that's predisposed to one of those two cancer types. And that's very useful for clinicians because they have, a, for veterinarians, they have a very difficult time differentiating between cancer, infection, and inflammation. So to rule in or rule out cancer at the onset of symptoms would be very useful information, very useful tool for veterinarians because then they, they could know um, how to perform or which, which diagnostic test to perform to confirm the presence of cancer. And then they could begin treatment immediately um, to address that particular cancer type useful for symptomatic screening. Um, a lot of times the veterinarians don't really know what's causing uh, the ailment for the canine. And then secondly, it's also a very useful tool for, uh, for wellness checks. 
canines upon turning age seven are much more likely to develop cancer than canines under age seven. So unfortunately, um, when, when canines are diagnosed with cancer, it's almost always because they're symptomatic, right? They, they're, they're sick, they're lethargic, they're not eating, they've lost weight, um, et cetera. There could be a variety of symptoms. And oftentimes if the symptoms are coming from cancer, it's a late stage cancer because it's, it's the same with humans. When you're symptomatic and you have cancer, it's generally late stage. So a very useful tool for our blood test would be to screen canines say upon turning age seven uh, for wellness checks. And if the, if the blood test comes back positive for one of these two cancer types, uh, the, the vet can perform a definitive diagnosis and begin treatment immediately. And in all likelihood, the cancer is gonna be an earlier stage, a stage one or a stage two. Uh, because we've caught it um, prior to the canine demonstrating symptoms. So we would reduce costs uh, for diagnostic tests, reduced, reduce costs for therapies, and um, improve outcomes for a number of these canines. And there's currently really no wellness check in terms of a blood test that's currently available out there. So we're really excited about this opportunity. Yeah, great to hear your first product launch there. So uh, you're running various programs there, but one of them uh, caught my eyes is the, one of the programs that you're doing is uh, related to COVID. Can you uh, explain a bit more about this? The way that we hope to position our blood test and, um, would be that upon a patient testing positive for a COVID-19 test, he or she would immediately have a volition blood test. And then ideally we could predict based upon the amount of nets that the body's immune system has injected into the bloodstream, if there are very high levels of nets that have been injected, it's likely that that patient will develop the severe symptoms of COVID-19. And so if um, the patient could immediately take a volition blood test and we see that the body has injected very high levels of nets into the bloodstream, that means the patient is very, very likely to develop the severe symptoms or a severe reaction. Then that patient could be admitted pre-symptomatic immediately into the hospital so that in the next 12 hours, 24, 36, 48 hours, whatever it might be, that the, 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 the severe reaction occurs he or she will already have a bed, um, will already have had a basic baseline workup in terms of um, health check, uh, will have potentially uh, oxygen and ventilator available to him or her so that when the severe reaction occurs, they're able to mitigate the severity of that and reduce some of the damage to that patient. So we, we don't know. The big question we haven't answered is we know that our technology measures nets. There's a very strong correlation between very low levels of nets equals a very mild or asymptomatic reaction to COVID-19. And we saw a very strong linear uh, correlation between those that have the highest levels of nets injection into their bloodstream also have the most severe reaction to COVID-19. The big question we have not answered and, and we're looking to run longitudinal studies is how far in advance of the onset of severe symptoms do nets show up in a person's bloodstream. So in other words, if they show up 12, 24, 36 hours before the onset of symptoms, we might have a very useful prognostic tool because then we can triage and get those people into the hospital, um, admitted to the hospital um, prior to the onset of symptoms. We haven't answered that second critical question yet. We hope to have clinical data from that by running longitudinal studies over the course of 2021. Sure, so in summary, what are the milestones that investors should be looking for the relation now in the next 12 months? Great question, Gilbert, and thanks for that. Um, several things. One. Uh, investors should continue to track uh, ramp and sales of our uh, veterinary blood test for canines launched at the end of November. So we'll have additional quarter quarterly results in terms of revenue. So investors should look for uh, hopefully a nice ramp in terms of revenue and sales from that product. We've also announced publicly that we're talking to some potential partners about a licensing deal for our veterinary product, which could include a domestic and or an international licensing opportunity. That may or may not materialize, uh, but certainly investors should keep an eye out for any kind of a licensing deal that we may or may not sign uh, with regard to our veterinary uh, blood test. And then we'll have additional data from our other clinical programs, additional data from our team program that I just mentioned, additional data from our lung cancer studies in, uh, in Taiwan at National Taiwan University, uh, some additional data from our colorectal study at Taiwan University in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, and lastly, clinical data from uh, some uh, some of our, our work in bloodborne cancers. We're looking at bloodborne cancers in humans, namely uh, a variety of types of lymphoma and uh, and leukemia. And investors, I think, can uh, feel reasonably comfortable with our current cash position. We raised about twenty million dollars back in February through a secondary offering. 
Um, so we have a significant amount of cash on the balance sheet. Uh, so I think investors can be you know, relatively uh, focused on clinical data and commercial milestones um, over the course of 2021 and into 2022. Thank you again, Scott, for sharing your story with us uh, here today. Thank you very much, Gilbert. I appreciate your time, the opportunity today. Again, our, our company is Volition RX Limited, ticker VNRX on the NYSE American Stock Exchange. And our website is www.volition.com. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you, Scott. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content.